Hi everyone, I'm here today with a cooking video. So I've done some of these before where I make a meal and I chat to you. Generally I do a Q&A which is what I'm going to be doing today. So I'm going to be making a recipe and answering questions while I do that and I'll link the recipe in the description box down below. This video is also very kindly sponsored by Skillshare which I'll get onto in a bit. So today I'm going to be making a vegan pie and I came across this recipe because I went away for the weekend with Lauren from Lauren and the Books, Lauren from Lauren Wade Reads, Jean and Mercedes. We went away for a reading weekend to Suffolk and I was in charge of cooking for the weekend and I was looking up vegan pies that I could make um, and this one came up and I have to admit that I was a little suspicious of it at first and I didn't have time to test it before I went so I just hoped it was going to be good. The reason I was suspicious of it is because it seemed really easy, too easy. It doesn't have very many ingredients in it at all but I made it and I can attest and Jean and Lauren and Lauren and Mercedes can attest that it is delicious. So that's what I'm going to be making today while I talk to you. So it is a mushroom and leek pie and for that you will need two punnets of button mushrooms two very big leeks and um, you will also need some just roll puff pastry or other puff pastry this one is vegan which is great i think most of the just roll stuff is vegan which is amazing either some garlic cloves but i'm choosing instead to use garlic puree some nutmeg some oregano it says mixed herbs in the recipe but i used oregano when we were away because that's what i had so i'm going to use that again today some oat milk and I think that's it for the pie itself. Then I have some potatoes down here, which are difficult to pick up, that I'm gonna make roast potatoes with. And I have some kale, which I'm also gonna cook. And I've got some peas in the um, freezer. Oh, and you also, for the pie, need some plain flour, a little bit of plain flour, and some butter. You can use pure, which is what I used when I was um, away. Um, I don't have any pure with me, so I'm just using butter today. But if you use pure or another vegan butter substitute then the whole thing will be vegan so the first thing that i need to do is chop up the leeks and the mushrooms okay let me answer questions as we go so the first question was from jay and he said what is the best book you've ever been gifted for christmas i was gifted northern lights by philip pullman from my godmother when I was, I think, 11, which was too young for me to have it, but it is my favorite series of all time. So it went on my bookcase. I think I tried it at 11 and couldn't get into it and then went back to it when I was about 14, 15 and absolutely fell in love with it. So given that that's my favorite book of all time, that's probably the one that I would say was the best bookish Christmas gift ever. As someone who is self-employed, what's your best tip to maintain a healthy work-life balance. I'm gonna get a bowl for these. It's tricky to pick. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting them all over the table. That was great. It's tricky just to, it's also tricky to put things in a bowl apparently. It's tricky just to pick one tip. I have made a video talking about being self-employed um, which I'll link down below and I made a separate video talking about how I organize my time. I think organization is the, is the main thing is to stay on top of all of your projects and to work out what you're doing short term in order to get immediate money but also have longer projects which are probably more of your passion projects which will hopefully earn you money later and to yeah, balance your life between those things. I would also recommend having something that maybe signifies you starting work and finishing work. It can be something really, really small. Um, so maybe you have a candle by your work desk and you light that when you sit down to work in the morning and the smell of that, it just, it, I don't know, it does something to your brain to be like, okay, yeah, we're in work mode now. And it may be, I know that I think Fran over at Fran Nerd says that she does this at the end of the day, the work day, she always takes a shower and that is her kind of barrier that's her saying right I'm finished work for the day for me during the summer the thing that I do at the end of the work day is go for a walk and that is my end of day thing but I don't tend to do that in the winter because it's it's very dark so I tend to try and get out around lunchtime if I can for a walk and um, so it, it depends on what time of year it is and what works best for you but have something to tell your brain we're starting work we're finishing work just that the lines are less blurry. I don't think I said at the beginning, this pie is for four to five people. OK, 
Okay, that's all the leaks done. Let's move on to the mushrooms. And the next question, Graham says, what's your favorite book or series of the last decade? Um, I don't know, but I did do a video where I spoke about my favorite books of the last five years. I know that that's not the last decade, but um, the five years before the last five years were when I was at university. So um, my reading was dominated by what I was reading for courses. Um, so I'll link the video where I spoke about my favorite books of the last five years down below if you would like to go and find out because I can't possibly pick one. I'm sorry. Katie says, what's the story behind your upcoming move? So Mr. M and I are moving next month. There is no story apart from the fact that we're buying a flat, which is terrifying, um, but something that I'm very, very excited about. And we'll be doing lots of upcycling of furniture and thrifting furniture and stuff like that. And if any of that feels like it would fit into a video, I may do that, but I'm, I'm not sure what kind of things I'll be filming. Yeah. I'm excited. Final question before we get on to the next stage of cooking. Red Wave Reads, that's a bit of a tongue twister, says, how are you spending the holidays? Well, all of my family are up in the Northeast. So I'm from Sunderland, if you didn't know that. Sorry, I keep looking down to make sure I don't lose any more fingers because I can't afford to do that. Um, yeah, they all live in the Northeast of England. So I went up to see them for a few days the week before last and that was my pre-Christmas visit. So I'm spending Christmas here in London with Mr. M and with his family and we have a few days off and then it's just back to work really. So I will be in London and I quite like being in London over Christmas because most people seem to leave. So it's quite empty and that's really nice because it's certainly not empty the rest of the time. <laughs> okay, I have chopped up all the leeks and the mushrooms. So now I need to cook the leeks in a little bit of olive oil in a frying pan along with the garlic. After a few minutes, I'm then gonna add in the mushrooms and the oregano and then cook that until they're, spoiler, until they're cooked. <laughs> and cooking times will be in the recipe down below, but I'm just gonna go um, by eye. The mushrooms and the leeks are cooking over there. So whilst they're doing that, I'd like to quickly tell you about Skillshare, who, as I mentioned, are very kindly sponsoring this video. I've worked with them many times before talking about their classes on writing, on annotating texts and writing essays, on planning and organization. And I'll link the videos that I've made down below if you would like to go and check them out. But Skillshare are an amazing online learning platform with thousands of classes on dozens of different topics. So if you're, trying to learn new skills or you want to hone skills that you already have, I think it's an amazing place to go to. It's really affordable too for a learning platform. Their premium annual membership works out at less than $10 a month. And I actually have a link, which I'll leave at the top of the description, which gets you two months free to the premium membership. So you can have a look around, see what classes you would like to take, take them, see what you think of them. As I mentioned, they're on so many different topics, creative ones, more technical ones, and there are cooking classes, so you can learn more about cooking. Um, and there's a class that they have on baking bread, which I really want to do, because I don't think I've ever cooked bread from scratch, at least not in memory. So I can't have done it since I was a child. And even if I did it then, I would only have been helping an adult to do it. And I'm not sure that that really counts. And as you know, Mr. M and I have been collecting lots of houseplant children recently, and Skillshare have classes on how to care for your houseplants, which have been really, really useful. So go ahead, check them out. Use the link in the description box down below. It's always lovely to learn new things. Let's get back to making this pie. I'm gonna check on how the mushrooms and leeks are doing. It's currently looking like this, which looks great. So I'm gonna take off the heat and put it to one side. And what I need to do now, and what you need to do now, if you're also making it, is make a roux. And what you need for that is two tablespoons of plain flour and one tablespoon of butter or butter alternative. And what you do is you put a pan on a low heat, it must be a non-stick pan on a low heat, and you put in the two tablespoons of flour and the one tablespoon of butter, and you mix it together until it looks like a little bit of a paste. It'll 
until the butter is melted and being swallowed up by the flour. You want to add in a tiny bit of oat milk and whisk at the same time, whisk it so that the milk goes into the flour and butter mixture. Then keep adding the milk very, very gradually until you've added in 350 milliliters of oat milk. The reason that you're stirring it constantly is one, because you don't want the milk to catch on the bottom of the pan because it'll burn the pan, it'll be horrible for you to clean and also will just make it taste not very nice. And also because you want all of the flour to dissolve into the liquid, you don't want any lumps. So gradually add the liquid, keep on whisking at the same time and heat it up until it's nearly boiling, at which point it should have thickened. You don't want it to boil, it just wants to be a little bit thicker and that is your mixture. And once it starts to thicken, that's when it's done and take it off the heat. The light is quickly disappearing. Okay, so I forgot to mention also when it nearly boils, once it's thickened, add in the nutmeg. It's only a tiny bit, so you can either grate nutmeg in or get ground nutmeg that's already ground. <laughs> and you put in an eighth of a teaspoon, so not very much at all. And I've mixed that in with the mushroom and the leeks. And I've put it to one side because it has to cool completely before we can put it into the actual pie. So that's cooling over there and I'm gonna start on the roast potatoes and answer a few more questions while we have the remaining bit of light here. So I'm peeling potatoes so that I can parboil them before we roast them. I'm studying literature and everyone asked what I want to do with it, an excellent question. Um, I want to own a bookshop, but I don't know how I could manage it or start it. Probably work at a bookstore first, what do you think? Yes, you need to work at a bookstore first. Um, I worked as a bookseller for 10 years and ran a bookshop as part of that. And I have written many books about bookshops. So yes, get a job working at a bookshop. Well, I worked part-time as a bookseller when I was doing my degree um, to help fund my degree and also to get experience. So if you can do that, do. Um, and then afterwards, I worked full-time as a bookseller. And as I said, I've written lots of books about bookshops. You may want to read a book I wrote called The Bookshop Book. I'll insert the cover here which is all about the history of books and book selling and about intriguing and wonderful bookshops all around the world and the people who run them. So it might inspire you and give you some ideas. So if it's not weird to recommend, recommend my own book, I recommend that. April says, would you ever get a dog or would Lola be jealous? So Lola is Mr. M's mum's dog, so my mum-in-law's dog. Um, and Mr. M and I would like to get a dog of our own, but I think we'll probably get a family dog. Um, so after we have had a child so not for a while and um, for, for many reasons um, and one of them is to do with Lola because we often look after her and I, she is quite a jealous dog so yeah that is one of the reasons why we wouldn't but there are other reasons too we've got time for one more question or the light is giving me time for one more question so let's end on a festive one and um, someone says what is your favorite Christmas tradition from when you were younger um, I don't think we really had many um, that I can remember, but something that we did at school that I used to enjoy was making Chris Dingles. Um, I went to a Church of England school, girl guides, brownies, all of that. I'm not religious myself, but I do find religion interesting. And um, we used to make Chris Dingles, so out of oranges, what is the orange that represents the world? And then you tie a red ribbon around it. Is that the blood of Christ? I can't remember. <laughs> um, and then you would put in toothpicks, four toothpicks, and cover them in jelly sweets with a candle in the middle, which you would light. And I can't remember, is it the food of the world? I don't know, I just remember particularly enjoying the jelly sweets for obvious reasons. Um, and then obviously you would wear sheets and you would be angels and you would carry the Christingle, which I think had an actual candle in that was lit and we would walk with it, which doesn't seem like it would be particularly safe. I think now they use LED candles. We used to actually use actual candles and walk with them and sing Christmas carols. That is, that is one of the things that I do like about Christmas is the Christmas carols, even though, as I said, I'm not religious. I just like the singing. Um, so there we go, that's the final question. I will quickly tell you what I'm gonna do with these potatoes. I'm gonna cut them into three, I think, and parboil them for 10 minutes. You want to make sure that the outside is quite soft so that when you drain the potatoes, you put them in a colander and you give them a good shake and that'll make the outside all fluffy. Then you wanna put them in a baking tray with some olive oil and put them in the oven 
for about 40 to 45 minutes on 200 degrees Celsius, so about gas mark six or gas mark seven, it can go a bit higher than that and they'll go really crispy. The temptation, I think, is to take them out and to move them around a bit. If you leave them in the pan, they will be better, so don't touch them. Just come back to them when they're really, really crispy and they'll be great. With the pie, once that mixture is all cooled, I'm gonna put it into a pie dish, roll out the just rolled pastry and put it on top, probably so it's about, I can say this thick, you can't really see how thick that is from there, but I'm just gonna eyeball it and make it about a centimeter, I think, maybe a bit less. And then I'm gonna glaze it. You can either, either use a brush and brush over some egg yolk to make it all golden when it's cooked, or if you're making it vegan, then you can brush a little bit of the oat milk on top and that'll also have the same effect. And that goes in the oven for about 40, 30 to 40 minutes, um, again, on 200 degrees Celsius. Um, every oven is different, so try and work out what's best for you. And then with the kale, I just put it in a pan with a little bit of water, which means I'm kind of boiling it slash steaming it for five minutes, just stirring it around until it's cooked. I mean, a tiny bit of water, so the water all evaporates, um, but it steams it as you're stirring it with some pepper. And then I'm gonna boil some peas as well. Um, I'm not gonna cook the pie right this second because it's not dinner time, but I will insert some clips here so that you can see the pie when I'm serving it, along with the roast potatoes and the kale and the peas if I'm making them. I'm not sure if I'm making peas yet. We'll see how much food we've got. Um, so that is it. That is the end of this video. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you would like to make this recipe, please do, please send me pictures on Instagram, Twitter. You can follow my instructions or you can look at the website down below where the recipe came from. As I said, it's a brilliant recipe, so yummy. Um, make sure you head over to Skillshare to check out all of the classes that they have. As I mentioned, I have a link which gets you two months free of their premium membership, which is fantastic. I hope you're all having a great week and I will speak to you very soon. Lots of books, love. Bye.